let's talk about Olaplex for a second. It's come up a couple times and I think it's a pretty unique experience. I mean, you, it's just not very often you see what you saw, which is, and for those, that, again, for those that don't know, Advent invested, I believe May, 2020, um, which is, you know, however, January, 2020, January, actually. 2020, I thought it was yeah, May, January. 2020, either way, invested a billion dollar valuation, the hundred million dollars in revenue. Those are kind of reported numbers. You don't have to correct them. Right. But now the, the numbers are a little bit more clear because they're on the public markets. Right. So it's a, you know, call it 15 X in the last two years, um, doing over 500 million in revenue trailing 12 months, 500 plus. Um, it's just crazy, right? It went from growing, I think around 70% to growing over hundred percent year over year while maintaining some pretty absurd profitability. Um, what has that roller coaster been like these last two, two years? And I don't want to out you too much, but I remember you telling me when they first bought it, you're like, I don't know, you might've overpaid for this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what has that last two years been like, as well as what were your lessons? That was the first company you've ever taken public, at least as far as I know. Um, what was, uh, what were those two processes like the last two years and then the IPO process? Um, it's been a fascinating experience. I have mm -hmm. to say, um, one, the goal was not to take it public. The goal was to build a great brand. Yep. So, so it really was a result rather than a strategy, mm -hmm. um, in this particular case. But, um, I, I was very impressed with Advent. That was my first company. Now I'm an operating partner with Advent and they could bring so much to the table. They have like 80 billion under investment where when I was at Castaneda, it was about a billion six, yep. very different. Uh, so I'm not used to having a whole toolkit available to me. Yep. So we, 2020, we bought it in 2020, but we didn't know it was 2020 until March. Um, and then supply chain, very challenging. Well, well Advent is in 12 countries. Yeah. So if we couldn't get an ingredient for our formula, we could immediately go to someone at Advent and say, okay, can we get it in Germany? Can we get, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And I had access to things I am not used to from a global um, investor um, and really top people. So what Advent can offer, and I know there's other very large groups that can do this as well, but I had not seen this because really it was myself and Steve Berg that helped the brands. And now I have experts in cybersecurity, in supply chain, in social media, you know. And so when we invest in a brand today, we can say we have this cornucopia of things. What do you need? You don't yep. need it all. We wouldn't have bought you if you needed it all. But I'll <laughs> Which ones do you need? And then we have experts for a certain amount of time that will, A, get you running, and B, help you hire the right people. So that, that I do believe, they, just, they helped us maximize this Advent Senior Team, helped the leaders of um, Olaplex, who are phenomenal, who worked so hard and came up with some great ideas to work with the hairdressers. And, you know, because their salons were closing down, they, they were very creative um, in how to handle 2020. So, so that was impressive. And then to do well in 2020, once we got back into stores, uh, it really accelerated. So it's- Well, especially with, you guys had a lot of professional distribution, right? Which people weren't going to the salons at one point. So to continue to do well, um, it's just like, I mean, it was, it's pretty wild what that ride is like and where you're going to go with it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of their expertise in social, as well as, you know, what you've observed with some of your other investments, right? Because if you were to look at some of your investments, like Tatcha was the number one brand we tracked in skincare when it came to EMV and, and influencers. Olaplex is the number one and has been for years when it comes to influencers and social. Um, first Aid Beauty and Urban Decay, obviously, were pretty good at social as well, or at least First Aid Beauty. I don't know when you exited Urban Decay. Um, but what is it about Olaplex, and maybe even Tatcha, that you think led to them being so successful when it came to the, the social side of the business, social media side of the business? Well, on Olaplex, they started so early. I think, you know, 2014, they were very active in social. So I think they were early, relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, but I also think because of the hairdressers who are the natural influencers, 
Um, it just, they created community. The thing is creating community. I don't think they lectured you. They sort of engaged you. Yeah. And I feel Tatcha does the same thing. So yeah. just really build a community around product that works. And the great thing about TikTok and Olaplex is that it works immediately. Uh, yeah. So go shower, you, you know, and, and I, I feel like they should put me on TikTok because it's improved my hair. <laughs> <laughs> they say I'm not the de right demographic, but that's okay. <laughs> but having said that, um, I do think you can show in a 15 second, I mean, you can show on TikTok the change so quickly. And then if you have a really authentic person who, you know, has their own hair salon, I just think the combination of all of that has worked so well for Olaplex.